Hey there, fans of brotherly love wrestling. It is I, Vic Delicious. Philly Zone, the Mecca here. It is the real McCoy, J D X, Justin D Xavier. And it's your man, C D, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Hello, boys and girls. This is your old friend, R J City. Hey there, brotherly love wrestling. Bill Carr here. Hey everyone, this is two-time guest Wheeler Yuta. Two bozos from Philadelphia flapping their gums about pro wrestling this, pro wrestling that. Which is not that unique in the grand scheme of things yet. You are in for a treat because you're tuned in to Brotherly Love Wrestling. Philadelphia, are you ready? <laughs> This is Brotherly Love Wrestling Podcast, your first stop for everything professional wrestling. So sit back and enjoy wrestling talk at its finest with your hosts, Larry Hall and Joe Corrado. Welcome, everybody, to Brotherly Love Wrestling. On the show today, we have returning guests, and albeit how long it's been since they've been on our show, still returning. One of our favorite tag teams that we've ever seen in the ring. They are the rep. We have Nate Carter. We have Dave McCall. Guys, welcome back to the show. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, not Carter Wallace. Nate Wallace, oh, please I... get it right, brother. I'm sorry. I'm can sorry. We, no, so can we re rewind that? We yeah. we're not, apparently, it's been so long. We're not up to date. We're still going off of uh, 2020. Yeah. We apologize. That's when I changed it. Yeah. Yep. They was, yeah so it obviously, was, so we had you had. on. You changed it. You never told us. Yeah. <laughs> remember when we first became wrestlers? I said your name should be Nathan Wallace. Yeah. You remember when I didn't listen to you? Because go fuck yourself. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and then you ended up doing it anyway. Ah, yeah. memories. <laughs> so guys uh wait let's not let's touch on why the change yeah dude it's way too many carters in wrestling and yeah. it got to the point where it was way way too many carters no disrespect to anybody else but it was like like dave said like yo we from philly we ain't nobody trying dicky if everybody else is named carter all right cool then screw it i'll just I, be me i kind of like wallace more i do too i think it sounds oh, better it's a great idea it's a great name isn't it Oh shit! Wow, you are still running him out there, huh? <laughs> okay, cool. My original idea was we should have been the Wallace brothers. He said no. I don't. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Again, <laughs> I mean, out I... of the pandemic, everything was changing. People start getting shots. It seemed like the perfect time to go ahead and do it. Yeah. So, post pandemic, everyone getting shots. You guys said you were coming back. You guys took a little bit of time off, probably healing time, I would imagine, both mentally and physically. Uh, Maybe our ego a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll call it that. <laughs> I mean, we can call it what it was. I mean, like, you know, before, like, you know, uh, pandemic and everything like that, you know, we were running around. Like, we were running every weekend we were somewhere. Every freaking, sometimes three, four times a weekend we were someplace. And then pandemic came, and it was like, okay, cool. That shut down hit hard. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, you know, just like everybody else, stuck in the house, get a little bit all the shape. You know what I mean? You had to take a step back and look at yourself coming out of that. Like, all right, like you know, if I am gonna start wrestling again, like is this the way I want to look? Is this the way I want to be? Yeah, you know I mean, do I just want to be another fat guy in a t-shirt, or do I want to look like if you know somebody never saw a wrestler before and it came to a show? They saw us and went, okay, yeah, those that that's what I imagine the wrestler will look like. All right. So, you know what I mean? When he's talking about, you know, rebuilding that ego, like that's kind of what we did. You know, we went hard, like uh kind of what is it, probably about the end of 2020, no, summer 2020, into the fall, all the way into the spring of 2021. We just start hitting the gym nonstop. Especially spring 2021. What is it? I dropped a bunch of town, uh, dropped a bunch of pounds. They put on a bunch of muscle. We got the people that we ran with. They started training with us nonstop. And it was like about five or six people that just like, we just decided to go hard and get ourselves in the best shape that we possibly could get in, you know, coming out of the pandemic. So we, we did come out in 2021, 2022, we looked like something. 
what what was the immediate goal? What was the first goal in mind? You don't have to give me the list. Like what was just the, <laughs> the, the first thing that, that you wanted to be ready for? Uh, I think, uh, what was it, Dave? We sat down, it was like January 3rd and we were like, okay, are we done or not? Yeah. I mean, I it takes a toll on your body, right? Yeah. We're like, all right, let's, uh, let's see whether or not we're done or not. And then next thing we know, Dave just goes, so, you know, GCW is running that 24 hour show in Philly. I'm like, yeah, he goes, well, uh, they wanted to know if we wanted to do it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so we're not completely done then. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's start doing that. You know, hit the gym for a little bit, get ourselves in shape. Like, all right, we can still do this a little bit, but still wanted to get ourselves back in shape. And then uh, our lovely trainer said they had a phone call from Florida. I said, hey, uh, might want you guys coming in for a tryout. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So then we're like, all right, so what do we do? And it was just, oh, yeah, get in the best shape of your life. So we was like, okay, cool. So like being in the gym by like four or five days a week, he goes, no, nah, probably about six or seven. Yeah. And that's kind of what we did. Good. And that was like second goal. We were like, look, we didn't care what was going to happen. We just wanted to see what would happen. Yeah. No expectations. Yeah. I'm just like, all right, get in the best shape we can. Do the best we can. If we make it, we make it. We don't, we don't. But you know what? Can't say we didn't try. Yeah. How was the feedback? Like, did you get any feedback from coaches or anything? <laughs> David, you want to take this one? The feedback <laughs> from Florida? Uh, our promos were good and felt real. Uh, we called the pop-up spine buster like very early and a train Albert. What the hell was his real name? Matt Bloom. Bloom. <laughs> Matt Bloom was like, oh man, that's a lot at the beginning. You gotta watch out for that lower lumbar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> no, was it the favorite was uh we did a first match, like singles match, and they were like, meh. Then we cut promos, and it's like we got pulled to the side, and we're like, "All right, uh, that first match, I no, I didn't like any of that." But uh, that promo it sounds like y'all go in there and fuck somebody up. We're like, yeah, we normally go cool. So this next match, I want you to go beat the shit out of somebody. So they gave us like, a tag, and they gave us a tag match, and it was like, "Oh, dude, this is it." We, no, we just kind of looked at our, like the people we're going against, and they're like, "So what they say?" And we we're just like, "We are so sorry for what's about to happen." <laughs> but we're beating the balls off you. <laughs> like, this, this, we're not gonna lie; this is gonna hurt. <laughs> love you, Ryo. Have you ever seen love this you, Ryo. Love you. So, were they people that you've wrestled before? Or it was just the first time. Uh, one shit? person we, one person we've never wrestled before. The other one was uh, Ryo. Oh, okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, so we know him forever. That's the thing. I think, like, I remember seeing when we went to our first CZW show. Obviously, being the first time we saw you guys and and Maven with you as well. Mm -hmm. And the second you guys would walk out of curtain, it was like these dudes being serious. Yeah. These dudes yeah. being business. I mean, of course, Maven plays the loud mouth heel manager like better than a lot of people in the indies by far, and and on a lot of the main. W uh, rosters on TV as well. So, but when we see you guys, there's, and not, then there's not a round. Like, you get in the ring anymore. and you see you guys do your shit in the ring is like holy shit. They don't just look the part. Like it looks like like it should look really. Yeah. It looks like a beatdown. It looks like a fight. Looks like a fight. And there's not a lot of people that make wrestling look like that. So that's like when you said, oh, we had a tryout, and you guys got to do a tag team like that. At least to me, I would look and be like, God, like that's that's what I want to see on ever on weekly TV. If I'm watching wrestling, I want it yeah, to look real. NXT is a perfect spot for that. Look, we're doing our best. All right, we're still shopping ourselves around. I mean, look, we know somebody, you know, tell me this up. <laughs> no, no, that was yeah, I know. It sounds like we, I we... For food. <laughs> it sounds like we know people, but no, that was more of Larry's uh compliments to you guys. Like it it it's tougher than it looks inside oh, the NXT or tryout yeah. arena. I mean, it, it, how many people were there with you? Like 500? No. Oh, it, no. Was, it was 
indie only. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh, it really? Was only independent wrestlers. <laughs> at this the name, if I'm being honest, I was familiar with eighty percent. Wow. Really? Been in the ring with at least five. Hmm. <laughs> I, I played it. Here's how far away it was. Yuta was at the trial with us. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Is that why he hasn't been on TV? <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. Hey, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. We'll cut hey, that it, off. It, it, this was before any agreements or anything was signed, man. You know. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, but if you're gonna shop, you might as well shop around, like you said, I'm trying to shop around. <laughs> I mean, the thing about wrestling post pandemic and finally what it's starting to look like again is that people are starting to pick up business and. Things are starting to happen for more people. I mean, TV. I can. I only mainly watch TV wrestling now, but it looks like. I mean, you're seeing newer faces for the most part. So, I mean, what after the tryout, or what? What was the result of the trial? We don't even know what the result of the tryout was. A not right now email. Yeah, and, you know that's always a nice well, thing also, to get. You know? Well, also too. The week after the tryout, everyone got fired. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Regal, so was... Regal, Vaughn, all the people who we talked to and gave us some real positive feedback, gone in a okay. flash. Yeah. Yeah. The only person who got called back that I was aware of was Malik Lee because he was in our tryout. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So that's a unfortunate timing. Yes. Yeah. Fucking sucks. I mean, we. I mean, we did at least get like positive, like you know. Things let us know what we're doing was like somewhat right, you know. Like yeah. Regal actually pulled us to the side and told us, like, "Hey, look, like, um, whether this works out or doesn't, uh, keep doing what you guys are doing. Uh, take everything you learned here back to the Indies, because if we're not out there, all of this information dies." No, no, with no, 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 no. Regal <laughs> said it. I quote: "Take <laughs> what you learned here and take it, take it back to the Indies, because." Ugh, <laughs> when we die, there'll be nothing left. What? What the, the fuck is this nigga talking about? <laughs> Sounds like Mufasa from Lion King. <laughs> Spitting game, though. <laughs> I mean, our way, game, though. once our way of things are gone, we've, all of the old ways will be too. And it was like we've heard that from another another uh, veteran. In wrestling, we had a conversation with uh, Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn at twenty three hundred Arena. So here, the backstory to that: Jerry Lynn was about seven or eight uh, drinks deep. He was hammered. He was and the, double fisting. He was <laughs> double fisting and fucking vodka tonics. Mm -hmm. And wait, Jerry Lynn drunk? Yeah. Continue, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he was fired up. He was. It was the ECW tribute night at uh, twenty three hundred for Battleground or some shit. And he's basically, he's just. For some reason, leaned on my shoulder and just started to talk to me, like we've no, we, like we've known each other for years. He's like, just any question I asked him, like, dude, like, how is AEW? Like, how are they treating you? He's like, like fucking shit. No, none of these young fucking kids listen to me. I'm just trying to fucking help them. Just trying to tell them they're going too fast and they're not doing fucking what they're supposed to. I'm like, okay, <laughs> tell, that's tell, crazy. And tell me more. And the locker rooms that we're in, we're the old men yelling at the clouds now. <laughs> <laughs> So when you get back and after you get that email, where did you take where did you take that advice to first? Was it CZW? Was was that where? Yeah, yeah we tried to. Yeah, we foolishly tried to rebuild the company. Holy shit! I have the shirt on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, we don't, we don't work there right now. But you. <laughs> so all right. So C, CZW is out, and now, well, we know yeah. that you're involved in at least labor of love, correct? Yeah. So what it ended up being was uh, we started going, like, we just started hitting, like, all of those indep uh, independent shows you see on IWTV. Yeah. And it was just, like, wherever. Like, we didn't care where it was. We were just like, let's just go places and do stuff. And we kind of were doing that for, like, the you know, past couple of years. You know, we did CCW for a bit, tried to help. Uh, you know, there was a difference of opinions. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? We, they went their way, we went ours. That was, it's like, probably for the best. Three. Okay. Yeah, that's like 2023. Now it's like, all right, cool. You know, just started working other places, started doing other shots. And it, it's funny, people will like bring us in and they'll go like, all right, we got to bring you guys in like a special attraction. So we show up to a place, 
do about three, four months, and then we leave. And they're like, we might bring you in in the spring, and I want to book you for this next date. Oh, cool. When's the next date? Can we bring you back in in November? You're like, it's March. <laughs> but sure, pencil us in. Yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better be preparing. You got another month. <laughs> Well, again, it, it'd be different if it was just one place, but it was like it would be multiple places. So that's kind of how we put our year ended up going out where we'd be, even though we're in like, you know, still the Northeast area, it would still be, we'd do a couple months over this place, a couple months over that place, a couple months over this place, a couple months over that place. And minus the summer, which for personal reasons, we kind of slowed down a little bit. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's get back to work. And, you know, we started going back up to Brooklyn, back up to the Bronx. Uh, back up North Jersey, we went back down to Maryland for the first time in like over a year last week. Last Friday, new company, FWA, started. Hmm. So, yeah, like kind of getting back out there doing more stuff again. How's the crowd down in Maryland? <laughs> I've never been to a show in Maryland. That's why I'm asking. Uh, Inter interesting. They want, they want to see a fight. Like legitimately. It's like they don't – it's – they don't care about they the want moves. to see something different. No, it's more like they've seen so much of the same stuff and so much of the family friendly stuff for uh -huh. so long. It's like, okay, yeah, but like, again, I could speak for David myself when we show up and just go, okay, uh, I'm just going to punch him in the face. And they'll just react off of that. It's like, oh, cool. This is, this works easy. out well for us. This <laughs> is pretty easy, actually. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, that's what they want to see. Well, that's what we already do. So cool. This works. The last time we had you guys, when we like we said, we talked with Yuta, you guys were telling stories about being trained by Drew Gulak. Now you guys are do training spots at Catchpoint that it's Gulak, it's Tracy Williams. Who else is in there too? Is someone else? Uh, Yuta. Yuta. Yuta comes Yuta back and trains still? Right. Yeah. Uh, Vita Von Starr comes down and trains uh, – we also have a uh, Kurt Robinson who comes out, uh, comes down there, you know, in house trainer. You know what I mean? We got a bunch of people. We'll have people come down, and uh, you know, you never know who's going to be there on any given day. So it's like sometimes we'll come in, and it's like, oh, Joker's here. Cool. Guess we're doing that. Oh, homicides in the building. All right. Guess we're doing that today. Hmm. You know what I mean? Nate Webb might show. Up. Okay, cool. We're doing that. I forgot all about that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Like hey, you never yo, know who's gonna be there. Like, yeah, let me teach you. If someone tries to shoot on you, you do this. D, no one does that anymore. No, <laughs> but you still need to know how. All right, cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> no one wrestles technically anymore. No, no, it no, I mean people trying to take advantage. Yeah. Well, it's not selling for you. Well, here's how you make them. And they don't do that anymore? Well, no one try. Everyone's again. It kind of goes right back to what you were saying before. No, no one makes it a fight anymore. Mm -hmm. Everyone, you know, uh, what I get into into like everyone makes it. It looks like dancing. It looks too soft. It looks too clean. It looks too pretty. Everyone wants to get their shit in. Yeah. Do you now? Do you attribute that to like the younger generation, the wrestling that they grew up on? Maybe they've been fans of. Like you look at at least. What yeah, we, but the people that they say that they watch, like Jeff Hardy and guys no, 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 like no, no, that, no. like the he was legitimately like the what? generation now is the Cena fans. Yeah. That's the that are adults. So like the generation where we grew up in, we are were watching adults? ECW, we were watching Austin, and we were watching these more of the hard nosed that actually look like it. Where when you grew up with the scene, and no disrespect to anyone I'm about the name, but the Cena Batista. Ray Mysterio, the Benoit, like those kind, that kind of PG it went into that PG era type. That's what kids were watching, and now that are the 18, 19, 20 year old potential yeah, wrestlers. A lot, of, a lot of people like that, too. You know what I mean? Like, but, is that you think you attribute that, like that just I, mindset? But when you say it like that, you say it like those guys weren't like you know out there getting it in. Like you're that, talking about like you're talking like those early two thousands. Like you're talking like that SmackDown Six era. So we're talking like Batista, Ray, Benoit, uh, Guerrero, Angle, Edge. You talking like 
yeah, Brock, like you telling me they wasn't out there getting it in? No, no, no. That's why. That's why I said that. I didn't mean it yeah. like that. Like they were soft or like that. I didn't mean it like that. But like mm. because they had more of the and then and into the PG era, obviously, is this like it's yeah, not about like two thousand EC like ECW and, and, and that in itself. Let's just put that on itself. Like those things, like Jesus Christ, the the, the shit we would see on that is a hell of a lot different than Super Cena that we would see on our TV. You know what I mean? Like, just something like that is kind of the comparison I was making. Like, that, the... I don't think it has anything to do with wrestling. I just think that over time, people have become softer. I don't think it has anything to do with what they watched or what... I mean, people have become more sensitive. People don't like say, controversy. They don't like confrontation. Not even just... From that standpoint, I think the era that we run into CM Punk was their guy on. Mm. That's where mm -hmm. that's where we're at. Okay. I've run into a bunch of 2022s 20, where it was punk, 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 okay. punk in his prime. Punk and you know, in his prime. Like mm -hmm. that bomb promo, when I saw it, I was like, God damn, that's hilarious. But the other people saw it, it made them want to do this. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I think I run into that time period. Okay. More so, you know, yeah. Just so, 2010, 2011, like, 2013. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. young, young 20s when they were a kid, probably. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah. I mean, we all get grow up in a different time. I mean, we're us four are probably around the same time, I would imagine, in yeah. a sense. I'm, my thought, my thoughts, and this just comes from like being at the school yeah, a yeah. lot. You know, we have like, you know, classes of kids that come in, and I ask them, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, how many of you have been in a fight before? Not trying to be like a tough guy or anything like that, but right. like when me and Dave started, you know, when we first went for, you know, the quote unquote tryout of the wrestling school, we thought it was a shoot. We thought like, okay, we didn't do good enough. They wouldn't let us in. So we came, we came ready for an actual fight. We came ready to throw hands. We came ready to like do this. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you always have to have that mentality, but even on a, on a base level, you tell some of these, you know, some of these guys out here, like, oh man, I need to work on my punches. All right, cool. Have you ever thrown a punch before? No. That's why you I mean you don't do it like this. this? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, well, well, no offense. Uh, throw, up, <laughs> learn how to throw a punch, dude. Like, you know, and, go to a boxing gym. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You can go to a boxing gym. Yeah, you could also go to your wrestling school. You can they go and like, like. You can look at YouTube tutorials on how to throw a one-two combo mm -hmm. with a jab and a straight. You then you take boxing. that, you can go to wrestling school. Exactly. You can shadow box. Then you bring it to, you know, a trainer and go, okay, cool. This is what I've been trying to do. This I'm trying to work my punches. How do I do it safely? Me how to, you know, do this without actually killing someone. <laughs> no, I mean, it's true, though. There you go. Do people actually inquire about that a lot, though? Like, do people, like, say, like, I need to work on my punches. Like I need to like, do they care about that? Cause I feel like it goes more and more into the, I got to learn how to do a 450 splash off the top rope. Like you feel like that. They, they ask about that, but it's one of those things where, it, and again, it's a generational thing. It's, you know, the world as a whole. So it's like, they'll say it, but unless you like, okay, cool. This is what we're doing today. Sometimes they'll be a little too hesitant to bring it up and they'll be like, Oh, well I need to work on my punches. Cool. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then before you know it, you've been throwing punches for an hour, hour and a half. And like, I'm bored working on punches. Yeah. But guess what? When you get that up there on the show, it looks good. You're going to be happy for this. You're yeah. going to be grateful for this. And also keep working on it at home. Because just as fast as you pick it up, you'll lose it if you don't keep working on it. Yeah. If you don't know how to do it, if you haven't done it ever in your life, there's a good chance that you're going to forget how to do it if you never throw mm. a punch. So I mean, yeah, that's that's my philosophy on like you know the different style. And again, it's it's, it's flavor it's flavors of ice cream. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody like they everybody like they style. I like that flavor of ice cream, the one where you actually look like you're you're about to <laughs> yeah. struggle and fight someone, and you're like power struggle, not like competitive flipping. Mm. I mean, I get it. You're athletic. I can't do you're, that. You're, you're, yeah. Well, neither can I. I, can, I know how to throw a punch. So I mean, at least I got one of those two things down. But I mean, it's there just like it's, it's not for me. And I, I've said it on numerous different shows. It's just, it's just, it's gotten too frilly, like too frou frou. Like I watched the Ricochet and fucking Osprey spot 
like numerous times. I'm like, this one, they're too old to be doing this shit. They lost like numerous steps. It's not as crisp as it used to be. So now it just looks like you're flipping and you're catching the other guy. You're not trying to hurt him. Like but, if he messes up the flip, you catch him. Fucking put his head to the ground. Stop. Wait a minute, but think of how crazy it would be though if when you're watching that same show, if nobody else did that but them too. Well, that's yeah, yeah, that's if a it was great a spectacle, point. and you just did it once, but not when everybody. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Everybody else I'm does like, it too. If they were the only ones that did it. You'd probably still be like, all right, this is crazy. Like, yeah, they might have lost a step or two. All of that stuff's still there. But it's like, yo, nobody else can do this because no. nobody else would. I think yeah. the problem is people who can't still try to do it, and then they do it half-assed. And it didn't, you know I mean? Think of how many people you see doing the 619. Yeah, why is that? It's not even like that good of a move. Yeah, but again, it, it doesn't. It doesn't come up the same way like Rey Mysterio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but so. that's the super kick as well. I mean, everyone in the damn in the damn wrestling business does a super kick, but only one guy. It matters. You know what I mean? The same thing with look the DDT. Jake Roberts yeah. made the DDT vicious. Now the see. DDT is just another move in the sequence of moves. You see a lot of DDTs anymore. Nah. I miss the DDT. It is what it is. DDT spine buster. I like those. Give me give me some of those. Yeah. Power moves. You just need guys to make them special. Yeah. How do you do I that? Mean, it's just you. Yeah. You make it special. Like you know, when we're training guys, like you know, we're talking in the locker room. So we tell people, me and Dave don't do anything special. We are not jumping off the ropes. We are not diving out of the ring. We are not doing any flips. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> Ignore any videos that you see of me doing any of the things that he just said. <laughs> <laughs> Again, when it's when it's time, when it's th- when, you know, rarely, rarely. <laughs> you mean he's not flipping you know, into the ring and out of the ring? We've done it before, but like we don't. Yeah. We'll rarely do it. Like we might do it once a year. You might I mean, see us do. That's something not your like style. That. Like you, that puts you out of like your one, your comfort zone, probably, and two, like it doesn't fit what you're actually seeing throughout the match. Like you just randomly do a flip. Like what the fuck? <laughs> right, but it also makes it special when you see it come out of like, oh, I didn't. Okay, that's right. This is an athlete. He can do something ridiculous. Yeah, like, like when Dave <laughs> was it. Dave can run and flip over the ropes without touching and still land on his feet. But he yeah. doesn't need to because he can also kick you in your chest and make you go flying out of the ring. So, kind of like the one, uh, what are they called now? The Warriors, Ivar. Oh, uh, the, 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 the Viking Raiders. Raiders. When he does the yeah. cartwheels all the time. Like, that was cool the first time I saw it. Then they made him do it every mm-hmm. fucking match. Right. Like, when he was actually, what, 300 pounds, agile, he just all of a sudden hits a cartwheel. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, but like, think about like the Undertaker. The Undertaker doesn't dive over the ropes only at Mania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that you see true. him wrestle through the whole year, and it's like never. Yep, never done it. Yeah, you got to take it, it out when it actually cool. meets. That's like his last like hurrah. Like he's throwing everything right. on the line. It's a big storytelling move, right? Now, and, with you you guys being trainers at at Catchpoint, I do want to ask mm-hmm. as trainers, as coaches, and and teaching young wrestlers. What's your biggest pet peeve when it comes to the young wrestlers, whether it's a bad habit, whether it's maybe something, a belief they have about the business? Is there something that, like, is something you hear all the time that kind of gets on your nerves as a coach? Or you see them do either one? Dave, you want to go first on this one? (laughs) The only thing that I ever re- the only thing I can think of that bothers me is, is like you've been in the business for a month and you think you should already be on shows. All right. So yeah. what 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 have you I don't know. <laughs> My first month in the business, I remember somebody saying, Who the fuck did you ever be? <laughs> so like it uh, that 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 does bother me. Probably. You ain't yeah. this shit you expect to get shit. Makes sense. When's the normal time frame, like, when you actually get in the ring? Is it, like, six months, a year? Or does it just vary on the <laughs> person? It, it's it's person, person. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people aren't ready after one month. 
I'd say. Most times, no. Yeah. Not everyone could be Logan Paul. It... But that's different. Like, that's an engine behind him. This well, true. Dude yeah, 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 out true. to his house to get his shit ready. Like, yeah. No. And not only that, you have guys like Shawn Michaels, you know what I mean, training you and doing AJ's these Yeah, he also had guys training him named Drew Gulak. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, and that's yeah, true. Him, him and Styles were his, like, big trainers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Anybody would be good after a money. You had that every day. That's yeah, true. true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> like, several hours a day. Like, the top yeah. of the top And have a WWE gym just in yeah. your backyard. Yeah. That does make things yeah. a little bit easier. <laughs> you don't have to travel. Right. It's just like you said, not not taking nothing away, but again, like you got that type of training system behind you. Yeah, you'll be able to get it in a month. I know yeah. like catch point um will take people from like uh you know the very beginning, like learning how to bump, and we give them a six week accelerated course. Okay. So now, by the that? end of the six week, um you're gonna learn it's Monday through Thursday, um six PM to eight PM. So we but we'd rather you get in around about 5, 15, 5, 30, you know, get in, stretch it out, ask questions, all that other lovely stuff. And we take them from learning how to hit the ropes, learn how to bump, all the way to learning how to have a match. At the end of the six weeks, we actually just had one of our uh, graduating classes, one of the smaller ones we've had, where you're going to have a match. Now, granted, this isn't like a show kind of like, you know what I mean? This is like family and friends, you know. That's Your support cool. system, here they are, family and friends, you know. Go out there and do it. Hmm. And, you know, we give them, you know, a small little show, whatever like that. And at the end, you know, we invite them in the ring, you know what I mean? Shake their hand, say, hey, welcome. Yeah, I mean, you know, you now actually had your first wrestling match, but you're still in the school. Yeah. yeah. You're not out there on an independent <laughs> show. You're in the school. Yeah. So and what do you, sure. what, what happens after the six, the six weeks accelerated course? Now they... Obviously, now get to like, choose if they want to stick with it or not. So, what what's the next right. step? The next step would be our dynamics class, and our dynamics class takes place uh, from eight to ten. Sometimes we end up going longer, and that's like okay, cool. Now that we know you know all of your basics, you know what I mean. You know, you know all of the basics because that's six weeks, at least four days a week, for six weeks, and you're training with you know you got you to one day, you got me another day. You got drew another day you got hot sauce another day it's like that's it for six weeks yeah but that's like that's really good for like yeah like i just mean trainer wise for like six weeks like being able to work with and pick the brains of of yeah, that yeah. list yourself and included thank you and we try to just you know talk to them figure them out figure out what style is going to work best for you you know we figure like we have enough trainers to work every different style yeah. So if there's any style of wrestling that's like, yeah, like you naturally gravitate towards, we're going to be able to, we got a trainer that can do it. Yeah. Like if they have and like an amateur wrestling background and they're like naturally athletic. Oh, we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> probably the easier one this year. Yeah. It's like you want amateur wrestling, we got that. You want high flying wrestling, we got that. You want lucha, we can do that. You want submission, we got you. Technical, whatever you want. Like we, okay, we can who do it. Okay. Who's that Friday class again? Oh, yeah. And we have lucha class. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Oh, I can't. I'm trying to remember the masked name because I do not want to say the real name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, going, we'll come back to that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there is a Lucha class on Fridays. That's yes. the fun. Hmm. Yeah, late night Lucha. That's pretty cool. Do you guys run shows? Like, I mean, obviously, I know like Labor of Now. No. Is that like a goal at all? No. Nope. No, no literally just, just right. school. So, Walk us through Labor of Love, then. Is that a, an off-brand of the school? Like, is that, or is that, at, does that have no affiliation at all? Labor of Love doesn't really have, like, an affiliation. Whether, you know, it's more like, hey, like, you know, we're all in the city, you know, let's work together. Okay. Da, 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 but there's no affiliation. Like, Labor of Love is Labor of Love, catch point is catch point. All right. You know, but it's all love see, between everybody. You're going to see a lot of the talent, like the trainers and whatnot, yeah, you know. they'll be all in labor because you guys all have a, a good rapport and whatnot. And you're all we have a good rapport. Like some of the people that, you know, either train with us will probably be on there. Some people that used to train with us might be on there. You know, there's going to be people from uh, uh, Burger School on there that will be training people from all over. 
Yeah, I see you guys are in a match against the outfielders. Oh, yes. Yep. Weber Hatfield and Shane McCoy. Is this one? Is, have you guys locked up with them before on a show? Yes. Yes. <laughs> many a time, I'm assuming. Not many. No. Three? Uh, was it technically? Oh. Oh, Technically, okay. we got both of them one time. Okay. All right. Uh, the other time, Shay had to have a substitute partner because Weber couldn't compete. And we won the Wrestlers Lab Tag Team titles off of that night from them. And then I want to say, I don't even remember how long it was till we had to rematch. We did in Pittsburgh. Is that where they're based out of? The... Uh... The wrestle. Oh, what did you just say? Shit. Wrestlers lab. Yes. Wrestlers lab. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> that's just that's where they had to show at. We're like, uh, all right, all right. Because I, I thought I saw a couple of shows that they've had in in that area in Pittsburgh area. I wonder was wondering right, if they were Pittsburgh, out. Pittsburgh. They had them in Field and they had them in New York. All yeah. right. Okay. Are they still around? Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> All right, we'll throw that one up into a maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, to a maybe. But anyway, but labor yeah. of love. Labor of love. Is this uh, is this something like a, a show that you're going to be running like monthly? Are they going to be doing stuff locally, just like kind of whenever they feel like it? I mean, I'm not I'm not that sure about it yet. But again, if it's going to be locally, like we're definitely down to do that. Um, it's funny that a lot of people are trying to start like you know smaller deals locally. You know. Territory. To get you know the area around Philly jumping again, which is cool. Yeah. It needs to. Yeah. It needs badly, <laughs> desperately, man. It's it's just look at it like, all right, this is definitely an untapped market. Like you know, you can get it. You can tell when you go to like a TNA show at the arena, or if you get like a a battleground show. It's like okay, there's there's money to be here. That between every four to five months, you can have a show more than that. Absolutely. Well, that was the big thing with Tommy Dreamer's company with House of Hardcore. Like, yeah. that that place would be packed for those shows. I mean, and obviously, look, it was Tommy Dreamer, and you would bring in Sandman and Meanie and stuff like that. Yeah, but now you but got you would, Bullock, but... you would get guys like yeah. the Hardys would stop by, or you would get, you know what I mean, any type of WWE affiliation he could get in on an in-between of a contract, you would get them. And then mm-hmm. now Battleground, Battleground's pretty good. Like it it mm-hmm. has its positives and negatives, but Battleground has been pretty, pretty good. We've gone to a couple events. They run really long. They do run long, but I mean some yeah. and I'm old. <laughs> you know, I'm, I can't handle it. I'm at my max like two and a half hour show and I'm 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 good. That's my that's my peak. Yeah. But to see a show like this, especially I mean, look, we live we live at in Ben like- Salem. So Nishamity Creek Brewing is literally I mean, five minutes up the road. I was. This is. This couldn't be any better. We y'all take more mm-hmm. shows that I don't have to drive all the way down to South Philly for. Not only that, but uh, the majority is over in Jersey. Like the yeah. the people that run month to month are in Jersey. And I, I hate Jersey. <laughs> I work in New Jersey. I fucking I'm tired of New Jersey. Like the Philly that like the Northeast South to mm-hmm. South Philly, like any surrounding, like even Delaware County, uh, Lower Bucks. Like that whole area is just primed for a show to run, just oh, yeah. like and have like homegrown talent, like not bringing in like you don't have to bring in all these people from fucking god knows where, just because there's enough people here that are good. It, I'm not gonna lie. like it, it. Seems like that's the one thing we noticed, especially you know coming out of the pandemic, and we were like talking about it a little bit before we got on. People booking the same, you know same guys all the time and it's mm-hmm. like okay cool that's fine you know whatever you know everybody go get your money that's dope but then they'll turn around and they'll be like okay but the rest of the card or even the same people that they're booking like there's there's nothing behind it mm-hmm. there's no story behind it there's no there's no emotional connection behind it that's you tough know too. people are like i'm just gonna go see wrestling and it's like okay cool but who who's your favorite oh well, so and so is going to be there, okay? But you don't care whether or not so and so is going to be there or not. Yeah. yeah. And when the company doesn't have that feeling, well, then you start seeing fans not care whether or not they show up or not. Yeah, you that's know, true. I mean, to, ha- some- to be invested is <laughs> like crucial. Like to want to go there and be like, 
yo, remember the last time so-and-so did this? Like, I want to see what happens now because they're going to be there again tonight. Like, something yeah. like like that. It's like, you got to think of it like the fans already made the investment. The fans, they blocked off their time to go to the show on the second. Okay, they blocked off their time. Then they got in their car. They drove, let's say, 20, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they got there on time. Then they sat there, they paid their ticket price, which is between 25, 40 bucks. Okay, now you go ahead and let's say you get your food, your snacks or whatever like that. Let's say another 25, 30 bucks on top of that. Fans have already made the investment. And then and merch. Now, and now the music hits. We ain't even talking about the merch. <laughs> yeah. Then the music hits, and the first thing the guy does is walk out of the curtain and goes, come on! I mean, like, oh, I already did all the fucking work. Like, I mean, like, what are you doing? You're dead. I mean, you're dead on. Like, they're dead on. They do that all the time. We just went to an event, and like, probably eighty five percent of the guys that walk, aside from the aside from heels, obviously, but a lot of the baby faces. That's just the go to. Like, it's it, it's what it is. But again, like the fan, like you know, the people paying for the tickets, they didn't already made all of the investment. And the first thing you can say is, "Come on, like." Fuck that, dude. <laughs> Go out there, get in a fight, show them that this shit matters to you. Show them why it matters to you. If you're pissed off at somebody, let me know why you're pissed off at it. And then show me why you're pissed off at them. Then maybe I'll cheer for you. But what if they do a bunch of flips? Then make it the best fucking flip I ever saw. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> show me something I can't see somewhere else. Yeah. Show me something that I need to get from you. Again, we, we take it to football. There's a bunch. Of, there's 32 teams with a number one safety. Why did I like Brian Dawkins? Because no one else played like him. He's an absolute. I don't know how to describe. I don't know if you could describe Brian Dawkins. Like I was but just looking. I, mean. I was looking for the right word. I'm like, man, there's so many you can use to describe. Him. Like I don't think there's one perfect one. I mean, passion. Passion was like. Probably through the roof. I don't know if I've seen any other football player play with that type of passion, drive, okay, competitiveness. I mean, just the will and the want to win. Like I was just, I was listening to the radio. Like Bryce Harper, you could tell he wants to win. He's my favorite baseball and, player. He wants to win. Look, now you, you take all of those descriptions. Now throw that to somebody like Sammy Zaneworth as Gunther at WrestleMania. All of those words still apply. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The drive, the, the, I mean, he's got it. I mean, Sami Zayn is that guy that he just he fits that that glove. So does Gunther. He wants to he wants to beat you up, right? But all of those those same things they were doing on the Indies. That's the difference between the Indies now and when those guys were on there. That's where you got to come on. It's like yo, no one had, no one's showing that drive. No one's showing that. You know, what I mean, I want to fucking win. If it doesn't matter to you, why the hell would the crowd believe in it? I mean, you guys seem, at least from, uh, obviously from watching you guys uh, wrestle and and seeing you through the years, is it wrong to say you guys are really into the storytelling of professional wrestling? Like, because you, you brought up that you thought that going to an event and stuff like that. Everything should mean something. Yeah, You exactly. shouldn't be doing anything that doesn't mean And not only that being brought up by Drew and, and stuff like that, I feel like that, is that not ingrained in you guys? Purpose. I think it was maybe re. I mean, Drew definitely has his, a very unique take on things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it was Rave. Jimmy Rave was like, all right, I've seen you guys do Lucha stuff. I've seen you guys brawl. I've seen you guys do gimmicks. I've seen you guys like kind of do kind of indie as well. But how about now you guys focus on getting the match over? Mm-hmm. And it kind of we kind of started doing thing. Every match was an, an example to do something completely different. So this month, <coughs> the match that just passed, it was about getting really good at showing the difference between two guys put together in a tag team. Yeah. Cohesiveness, the same matching outfits. Not, not, even just, not even just what we're wearing, but how we respond, how we talk, how we move. It's a the flow. 
It's a flow that you can feel. Mm -hmm. That was that was this 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 match goals. The next match goal. <laughs> <laughs> I got some new things and some new drops that I'm going to do on. <laughs> it's going to be violent. <laughs> That's good. Is the next show Labor of Love for you guys? Yes. Oh, okay. That's yeah. That's October twenty sixth. We'll yeah, yes, let's say October twenty sixth. <laughs> okay. If, if something <laughs> changes, I'll let. I'll let people know. <laughs> okay. Oh, it could be sooner. <laughs> could, be soon. could be sooner. Yeah, could be like, we, could we, be this we, weekend. <laughs> we don't know. This is a, this is a mystery. <laughs> Wait, make sure we know. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if, if it changes, we'll let you know. But you, you know how we're wrestling this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Card cool. subject to change. Card subject you. to change. Got it. Card subject to change. <laughs> Yo, you beat me by like five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, man, that money got hit that bank account. I'll tell you. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, what were we talking about again? <laughs> we're talking about some violence was in there, story and then, telling. And storytelling. Well, and storytelling. Oh. That was the other yeah. thing I, I kind of want to veer towards, you know what I mean? Main TV wrestling, because there's this story that WWE has been telling for the past two and a half, three. More, more than that, from the beginning since the pandemic is this bloodline Roman reigns and everything that's leading up. And just when you think that that bloodline is getting stale or just when it's like, eh, I don't know, it picks right back up and, and the rock comes back. Bad blood Saturday night. <laughs> you had Roman and Cody, you had the bloodline. You have Jimmy Uso come back. They win the match. And then you have the rock come out and the rock absolutely lights that crowd on fire Guys, 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 I haven't seen this show yet. I only watched Man and no! Fire. Oh, no, come on. Come on. no, don't, don't do that. Don't say that. I didn't just ruin that for you. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> but I mean, you need to give him a heads up, man. It was very rude of you. We're sorry for that. I'll apologize. We'll turn it on as soon as we get done. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, uh, I feel terrible now. You I just ruined watched the whole... it last night. I just, well, look, before we I hit record, I said. Are you? Do you watch everything? I watch everything. Well, he didn't say it. I took. He, I mean, it's, he just doesn't watch it live. Live, yeah, you don't. It, yeah, you're not okay. In his defense, you didn't days. say, "Have you watched? Are you? Are you current?" Yeah. I, Next yeah. time you go, wrong, are you wrong current? words? Wrong words. I apologize, and now I just ruined the moment. I I feel like shit. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> but what okay. he was trying to say is storyline wise with the bloodline and everything like that, like it it being important to have it doesn't have to be to that magnitude because let's face it like it's hard to keep people's attentions for four years three years on one mm -hmm. thing like you have to you have to have this really well like a lot of luck mm -hmm. and i have to have a, a solid plan put together to like that's not just something you wing i feel for four years mm -hmm. maybe oh. some parts are long but like for the most part in wrestling it feels like nowadays or the past I don't know how many years you want to call it. Like storytelling has gone down when it comes to wrestling. It's starting to pick back up. Like I really feel like it is. Like I, th I feel like people are at least trying. Like storytelling is a little bit back. There's there's a reason to be invested, not just moves. Like mm -hmm. there's a reason to be invested in people now. Like it that not like how it was. Like mm -hmm. I feel like even when I don't know when AEW started, like. There was a small investment because in, promos, promos are honestly where it's at for me. Like promos get me invested. That gets me in the door. I don't really care about like, I care about how, like how the match is put together, the outcome, if it like makes sense within the match, but it's really the promos and the talk and the, all the side stuff that really locks me in. It gets me excited anymore without that. Like I don't get as excited. I mean, you got to think about it, though. Like, the reason why, like, the Bloodline stuff, I think, works in, like, like you know, the CM Punk and, like, Drew McIntyre, like, works and exactly. things like that is because, like, okay, cool. You throw the promos and all that in there, but, like, you got to throw some truth into it. You got to throw some of yourself into it. And I think, like, a lot of folks, especially, like, on the indies, whatever, like, yeah, WWE has weekly products, so it's like they have more time to tell it. But you can still tell your story and make somebody think from one month to the next, okay, what's going to happen? 
just because you have your actual emotion involved in it. You know what I mean? If I don't like somebody, I'm going to let you know I don't like them. You know, Dave and I, we've had matches where we've done business with people we honestly do not like. Sometimes that's the best type of match, too, for the viewers. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll beat the living hell out of each other, and it's fine. But at the end of the day, it is business. You know what yeah. I mean? You And you got to always have that mindset, you know, first. Do yeah, people forget so I, that easily? I think I think people are just more avoided nowadays. Where it's not even like to forget. It's just more like, well, I'm just not even going to go into that because that's so I don't have to deal with it be it a person or be it like, I'm just not going to talk about that or, you know what, I'm just going to have fun with this. We're just going to make it fun. And I say, like, okay, cool. But if it's fun, I don't think y'all are actually going to fight. And if y'all do fight, I don't think you're actually trying to hurt someone because it looks like you're just having fun. But if it looks like I actually got beef with a motherfucker and you already know, like, okay, no, like, I know he's saying this, like, at a show, but, like, if you want to lock on, they really don't fuck with each other. By the time that bell rung, you knew that we really didn't fuck with each other. You would still be like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, well, that's the that's whole excitement, is not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah, and you would be looking at everything that we did, and you'd be like, I think they just, okay, did he really just, okay, he really punched him out. Okay, he's really mad. And then you, next thing you know, there's the magic. Hey, like, tell me if I'm wrong. Well, tell me if I'm, yeah, tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Um, like, would it be like better on the indies? Like if you're going to like come at someone like, cause you can utilize social media like big time. Like someone says something, you can come at them for that. Like, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of different things you could use to your advantage on the indies. I think it, I think it depends on the person and depends on how they do it. You know? Some people who work. I feel like a lot of things go well so long as you put in like a shit ton of effort. People feel it. The more you you put in, the more you'll get out of it. Yeah, I mean, that's anything in life. That's a good. It's a good lesson. We're learning lessons today. (laughs) I I just think it also matters, like you know who you are. You know what I mean? Like you know what your what your no offense. Like like we take the WWE. No offense. Like you know, Tozawa's not a badass. You know, on screen. No one's going to see Tazawa as fucking on par with Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. So even, you know, everything he's going to do, if you went on Twitter and everything like that, you'll fuck that shit. McIntyre, like, yo, that was bullshit. I'm coming after you. I'm fucking you up. I'm going to shit in your fucking lawn. Like, yo, fuck you, dog. Like, it's going out. You would still be like, okay, yeah, but. He's going to kill you. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, so once um, he finds you, he's going to murder you. <laughs> right. So it's like, all right. You know, you could put in the work. But that's kind of what I mean when I say, like, you know, that work definitely has to be there, but I also think, like, it comes along, like, you know, who the person is. I think you got to be honest with yourself and be honest. Uh, what is it? Actually, Drew told us, you know, how does how do other people perceive you? We can all think, like, this is what I want to be, but, you know, when someone looks at you, what do they actually think? And yeah, that should be a starting point. A lot, a lot of times, perception can be reality. Or at yeah. least people will, I mean, I mean believe that anyway. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. I mean, look, that's, like I said earlier, is that's what, when I we first saw you guys, because I, I can't even tell you who you were facing the first time we saw you, but, I mean, it was throwing people over guardrails, and it, it was... Yeah, that's what I remember. It absolute, was out, out at our feet. Absolute like, craziness. It was in Voorhees. Took about 10 minutes. You guys were out in our feet, beating the shit out of each other. Might have been private party. Might have been. Yeah, actually, this very well could have. Been. I mean, this was a I time, mean, time frame. It was time uh, frame matches up. Ace Austin was Ace Austin was was there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> private party. <laughs> it might have been if private that, party. Now if, that you say it, it very <laughs> it well could have been. I mean, the, time, right. the timeline does equal. It does add up. And I know the show doubt. ended like abruptly. It was like another another school or something invaded and DJ Hyde oh. was out there screaming and yelling. Oh, that was House of Glory. That wasn't a school. That was that was Yes. That's what it that's was. What it House was. of Glory. Yeah. That was the New York Record Crew. Yeah. Yeah. No, we wrestled no, we wrestled Amazing Red and Anthony Gangone that night. Is that what that was? Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I remember like we all of us, and I mean every fan was standing there, they're like, what the fuck is going on? Like this sometimes was, that's not a pain. It was one of the craziest scenes I, I think I've ever seen on an indie show. It was just it was nuts. Yeah, it was we have a mayhem, mayhem draws. Yeah, but that's the thing. It, it was real. Yeah. Uh I'm just saying, what if I told you nobody knew it was gonna happen? We like might not might even in the you. locker room. I mean, then it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it I I guess it doesn't matter because it worked. And look, and we're still I still that's yeah, one of those things that's burned into his brain. Memory. Like yeah. it was crazy yeah. as hell. Or creating organic moments like that, you know, cool. there's nothing fucking better because you can't you can you feel the realness of it. Yeah. Because no one knows what's actually going on except for seven people. <laughs> yes. So only seven people know who, what, where, and why. Everyone else is completely in the dark. So as far as they know, it's all sight. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. The best was seeing Twitter as we're going home and the people going, no, it had to be fake. No, it was yet. Yeah, no, yes, no. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> we got Twitter fighting. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you've made it you've made it once you made twitter turn on each other <laughs> it's hard to do maybe not yeah <laughs> <laughs> well yeah similar like you said like you know that's that's what it was though that was real that was like actual emotion that was something that was you know we were able to go out there and do that and make people believe something because nobody knew what was going to happen mm-hmm. not even the locker room yeah <laughs> But it worked, like you said. Yeah, yeah, it did. Hundred percent, it did. So, uh, I did want to real quick get the information out there for Labor of Love because, uh, yeah. again, we love that how local this is and, and getting the close to Philly area anyway. So, Labor of Love, Neshaminy Creek Brewing, October twenty sixth. Doors is this of- is this an indoor indoor show? It's indoor. I believe it's indoor. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they have a big hall that next to the brewery. Fair enough. But uh doors open at five. I think bell time's five thirty. Tickets twenty bucks with a costume, twenty five we can wear general costumes? admissions. We can we can wear costumes. It's yes. yeah. It's what not only can you, it's encouraged. Yeah, it's oh, five I days. My hair Halloween. I can go out as fucking Mar from uh Home Alone. There I got my go. hairs going on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't tell me with it. Yeah. <laughs> You're touching my soul with that one. You're touching my soul. <laughs> the question is do I do the white powder face or do I look like I'm electrocuted? Electrocuted. Right. Oh, when that scene when he gets electrocuted, it's the <laughs> only thing that allows me to. I can't hold back my original laugh. It's the most embarrassing thing that I do. <laughs> that seed. Oh my gosh. Kills that, me on the inside. So that please, and the, tr- the original. The, need, the tarantula on the chest. The tarantula scream when he screams. With that the was screen. good. That's another That was one. good. You're right. That was good. There's but see, a- I was more blown away at Macaulay Coke and laying prone, even though it was a BB gun. Even though <laughs> it uh, had been a real gun. This white child was prepared to kill this man and shoot him in his face. <laughs> <laughs> that's violent. That's, that, that's a movie. That's a movie. There's, a, there's at least 11 scenes in those movies that they should have died. They should have yeah. not have survived. When he yeah. lit his head on fire, I thought he should have died yeah. twice. He dropped a brick on him from the roof. Yeah. Three. <laughs> that's, that's been going in and no, he's dead. Back he a flight of clean. Oh. Oh. His, skull, his skull should be I want someone to do like an AI generated what that actually would look like <laughs> like his skull just going straight through his fucking brain oh, Joe yes. Joe is such a big fan of that movie he has a quote on, oh, yeah. tattooed on his shin yeah me and my sister are big fans I have she has uh, why the hell did you take your shoes off and I have why the hell you dressed like a chicken on my shin <laughs> Good shit. That is perfect. And then we each that have is... one turtle dove. We have two turtle doves from the second movie. So that she's, she's got a turtle dove and I got a turtle dove. That's level. 
Uh, but, all right. Uh, also, you. you were talking about merch before we got on. Did you guys yeah. update on merch, maybe? There's a possibility like said, is what I heard. Like I said, there's a possibility. Right now we're working on getting... If this, this design comes through, then yeah, we'll be able to get it. Okay, by the 26th? Time crunch. Yeah, like I said, we're waiting on the design. If the design comes through, then I have... Uh, what is it? Uh, local t-shirts. Uh, they do. They can do all about a lot of our merch. They did our last run of shirts. These ones. We can get them done within two weeks. Yeah. Okay. All we right. We can get them done within two do weeks. Do you have any more of these too? Because I we I don't have any them. more of the red ones. You had the black. And I think ones? we have like four black ones. Damn. You got any XLs? I will look to see. If I do, I will definitely bring it. Thumbs up. <laughs> Dude, I will definitely bring the XL. All right. All right, so it's a popular size. A lot of people go with that. October twenty sixth, again, Nishamini yes. Creek Brewing. Yes, labor of love. Labor We're of love. We get can. some beers. Get some wrestling. Get some music. I think. Yeah, there's some music. bands playing. It's it's one big pack. Oh no, Dave, hit a double bicep real quick. Double bicep. There it is. Lean mean. Lean, Lean mean. mean. <laughs> But, guys, thank you so much. It was great seeing you guys. Great talking to you guys once again. We appreciate We will this. definitely see you on the 26th. We can't wait. That's and uh, you guys have a great night. Thanks again for being on the show. Yep. Thanks for having us. All right.